Hey everyone, it's Martin, aka Anders, and today I'm going to be touching on what is probably the single most requested video that I haven't touched on yet in some capacity, and that is the topic of map biases as well as just general map statistics. This is a favorite topic of players and casters alike. Whenever you watch any major tournament, you're going to have casters discussing whether maps defender sided or offensive sided. Uh, and I'll be completely frank that at least by the statistics that I have, a lot of the casters don't have it right. Uh, one thing that I commonly encounter is casters saying something's defended sided when it isn't or saying that something is skewed to a degree that it just frankly isn't close to, at least by my numbers. And I'm not saying my numbers are necessarily the law at this point, uh, but in the absence of a more uh, reliable metric, I find it a little bit odd that people seem to think uh, the norm is something that isn't represented by these numbers. Uh, so we're going to take a look at map biases overall, as well as my thoughts on what that says about how Valorant as an entire game should be handled in a ranked ecosystem. And so we'll hop right into it. First up, we're going to hit map play rates across the board. Starting off with Bind, it is the most played map overall. This is largely helped by North America that plays the map at a 44% play rate. Uh, EU, by comparison, trails quite significantly behind that at 35.69%. Next up, we have Haven with an overall play rate at 38.5%. That brings it in at second place in North America at just shy of 40%. And in EU, it's actually the most played map, barely edging out Bind at 36.9%. Lastly, we have Split, which I'm sure surprises absolutely nobody, at just shy of 21%, with a crazily low, barely north of 16% in North America, and a comparatively significant 27.5% in EU. The reason these play rates are significant isn't because that it indicates one map is necessarily worse than another, but what it does show is it gives us a barometer for how the overall tournament ecosystem, even granularized down to North America and EU, prefer to play the game. It is the maps that regional metas and the tournament meta overall lean into and thus occur most frequently. And those leanings can be driven by a number of different factors. It can be how a region perceives a map to be skewed a certain way. It can be that a region has taken a particular liking to a map and thus has practiced it significantly more. Uh, you'll see later on with win rates that that is very clearly the case with EU and Split in particular. And so we'll get going towards that. Before we pivot into win rates, one thing I wanted to take a look at was how patch 0.5 changed the overall metagame. Obviously, there were changes to split brought in, as well as bug fixes to a lot of glitch cameras and, and niche scenarios like that. Um, and so how, how did that change the way that the tournament meta is approaching map selections? Um, and the thing that I wanted to look at right out of the gate is, regardless of whether or not the changes affected actual map skew, which would be determined by win rate, how did it change people's perceptions of map skew, which would be dictated by the play rates changing. And interestingly, the play rates increased significantly. People in North America and EU, at least as indicated by the numbers that I have at this point, um, seem to think that split is significantly more appealing to play. Uh, in North America, you saw a play rate increase of over 5%, and in EU, you saw a play rate increase of over 3.5%. And in the latter's case, that actually makes Split the second most played map in EU, at least tied. So uh, clearly a mass change in the perception of that map, uh, causing a significant uptick in play. Moving on to the real meat and potatoes of map bias, you obviously have the win rates. Uh, this is going to be the thing that all of your friends and all the casters talk about, whether or not a map is offensively skewed or defensively skewed. Um, and it's pretty interesting. When we hop right in with Bind, it is quite defensively skewed. This goes in line with what I would assume and personally see as the prevailing public perception of the map. Um, it's almost a 5% skew in favor of the defenders. If you look at Haven, it's where I think the public perception really misses the mark. If you listen to a lot of casters or just industry professionals as they talk about the game, a lot of them are carrying over 
uh, their pre-existing understanding from games like CSGO, where the prevailing number of maps are going to be CT-sided. And for whatever reason, they sort of transpose that onto Valorant and assume that all maps have a slight defender skew. And at least by my numbers, that just isn't the case with Haven. You have an almost 2.5% skew in favor of offense, and I think that uh, what it really boils down to is that if you have three attackable sites on a map, offense should always be at the advantage. I, I don't think there's any real way to logic your way out of that corner. If the offense has such flexibility at their disposal, then the defenders are going to be at a disadvantage. Last up, we have Split, which is probably the most volatile uh, corner of conversation when it comes to map bias. People know that it's extremely defender skewed, and my numbers obviously support that. With an almost 16% defender skew, it is a pretty brutal map to play on. Continuing what I did with pick rates, I want to look at how patch 0.5 is affecting Split situation, and it may come as a surprise to a few of you that it's actually getting worse, at least according to my numbers. Personally, I assign this to just sampling error. Right now, we haven't had a ton of tournaments on patch 0.5. I think I have something like 2,000 rounds thus far, which, while not small, isn't an overwhelming amount, especially if the shift is something on the smaller side. And so, at least at this point, the change from patch uh, 0 0.49 to patch 0 0.5 was a 1% increase in the defensive skew. There are a lot of things that we can take away from these map biases. One thing that I think is really misunderstood is that a map being biased a certain way doesn't mean that you should be snap picking the starting side that it is biased for. In fact, depending on the severity of that bias, you should be picking the opposite. A great case study in this is if you look at Split, which obviously has a very acute and hard to overcome bias, you should almost always be going offender side. Because if you look at how uh, balanced the map is, so it's like a 43% uh, offensive side and a 57% defensive side, you're going to win on average, I believe it's five rounds on offense and seven rounds on defense in the first 12 round half. And what that then translates to is a second half where you're now on defense and you get access to more defensive rounds because the statistics are so close that the probabilities have to run out to a whole 25 round game in order to come up with a solid sample. So if you extrapolate it out, you take five, they take seven, then you swap sides, you are more likely to hit your 13 round target than they are. You, you will win out if it goes to the full 25 more often than you lose. And so if you tune your game for your offensive side on a map that has a hard to overcome defender skew, you are more likely to win than you are to lose. Hopefully this doesn't come off as some like universe shaking hot take because the numbers have always supported this and frankly common sense supports this. If we break things down comp by comp and map by map, there is clear cases across the board where you have defensively skewed comps and offensively skewed comps, and in tournament play, when they're picked for their respective sides, they do better or they do worse. If we look at a bind offensively skewed comp, you have Brimstone, Cypher, Omen, Sage, and Sova. It has a 13% win rate above the norm on offense and comes in just over 1.5% north of the normalized defensive win rate baseline. This is clearly an offensive comp that is tuned for offense on bind. You have a host of execution tools, as well as numerous information gathering tools, and it is offensively skewed. Now we look at a bind defensively skewed comp with Breach, Brimstone, Cypher, Sage, and Sova, the classic common core plus Sova that we all know is an excellent defensive core, in offense on bind, a negative 11% win rate compared to the norm, and yet a 10% higher win rate on defense. This shouldn't surprise anyone. If we look at Haven, similar things show up. Breach, Brimstone, Raze, Sage, and Sova, bringing in Raze obviously being offensively skewed, has a 10% win rate higher than the offensive norm, while coming in 1% below the defensive norm. It's an offensively skewed comp. 
Then we bounce back to the common core plus Sova, and would you look at that, it comes in a quarter percent above average on offense and 5% above average on defense. It still punches through as a defensive powerhouse. And now things get really spicy. If we look at split, if there's a team that's willing to go all in on actually being offensive with something like Breach, Cypher, Omen, Sage, and Viper, they net a 27% above average win rate on offense while pulling a 1.5% higher win rate on defense. This isn't like a small sample composition. I only took these comps in this back half of this video from the top 10 played comps on any given map, so this is not like some small variance thing. If you all in on offense on split, you can make it an offensively sided map. People just don't. If you look at EU in particular, there are instances where they play the wackiest stuff you have ever seen. They'll run double entry plus Viper, they won't even bring a Brimstone, they won't even bring a Cypher, and yet they'll crush it. You'll see literally 9-3 offensive halves on split, and yet in North America you see players that default into defensive comps on offense and get absolutely annihilated for it. And if we look at this next comp, you see exactly why they're getting annihilated. If you go Common Core plus Omen, which is already a more offensively skewed comp than the norm, which is the Common Core plus Sova, you're still 1.5% below average on offense, despite the 14% you get on defense. And by no means am I saying this composition is bad. I'm just saying, why in the world, if you're starting on offense, would you opt into a 1.5% below average win rate? Pick this comp if you're starting defense. Take your significant advantage, create a buffer for yourself that then band-aids and covers you for your second half where you can still convert. Do the same thing when you're playing offense though. Apply the same sort of theories. Choose a composition that has a significant offensive skew. Create a buffer for yourself and then convert that into the second half where you're playing on the side that you're significantly weaker on. That's how it needs to be done. People just don't seem to do it for whatever reason. Especially on a map like Split, where there's already a significant defensive skew, you don't have to lean into that. You're already going to have a natural advantage when you shift over to that side due to the inherent characteristics of the map. So don't lean into that. You don't need to amplify the side where you're already going to be overpowered due to natural factors. You need to band-aid the side that you're going to be naturally disadvantaged on and lean into offense. And so this whole rant was definitely going somewhere, and that somewhere is we need to know our starting sides. If Riot wants the competitive meta of this game to develop in any meaningful way, we cannot have a competitive ranked queue where we have no idea what the hell we're doing. All the current ranked system does is promote people picking the most homogenized middle of the road agents as they possibly can and pray that they high roll onto the side of the map that it is naturally skewed. And that's complete nonsense. We all know that Riot's secret desire for this game is for it to have a massive franchise league and be a triple S tier esport in the long run. If we can't practice what's actually going to be used in tournament play in our rank queues, guess what? We're never going to get there. One of Valorant's defining characteristics that differentiates it from CSGO is the fact that there are agents. If we can't pick agents in a meaningful way, driven by our starting sides, then guess what? You're just creating a watered down CSGO that limits the utility available to given teams based off of randomized factors. I'm only going to say this one more time. Riot, if you are listening, you need to add starting side information to ranked queues. It has to happen. All right. Well, uh, that got a lot more heated than I thought it would. Hopefully you guys realize that I'm super passionate about this game and esports in general and that I genuinely care about the health of this game and its success in the long term. I'm super interested in opportunities that may arise as this game develops more and more. Um, and so I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Hopefully that wasn't too disassociating. Hopefully you aren't like, oh, this dude's a total crackpot for suggesting that. And a lot of you guys understand the underlying rationale of why I say what I do. Um, and why I think that's so important to the way the game develops. But comment down below. Let, let me genuinely know what you think. Do you, do you think that this is something that could be critical to the game's development in the long run? Um, or do you think that it's something that's not necessary? Do you think that I'm wrong in saying that it would create sort of a watered-down CSGO? Do you think that a game that leans very heavily into sort of homogenized utility and heavy, heavy emphasis on gun skill, do you think that's the better version of the game? Um, so let me know, let me know your thoughts. And also let me know just generally what you think about 
map bias. I mean, do you think that the fact that EU can make split seem offensive sided is absolutely nonsense? Do you think that they've got some secret special sauce and that that's not actually the way it should be? I'm super curious. Just let me know. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. If you guys like my content, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, hopefully less ranting, more actual thinking, um, you can follow me on Twitter at Anders TV. You can follow me on Instagram at Anders TV, and you can also catch me on my streams at Anders TV. I've been playing a little bit of sort of miscellaneous pro-am competitions with a few of my collegiate players, uh, and I'll probably be doing that throughout the season just to, to fill up my time and, and keep busy. Uh, so stop by, say hi. I'd love to talk to any and all of you. Uh, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.